Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another episode of the Iron Life Podcast. I am your host, Chris Tutella. I'm looking forward to chatting with you guys today. Uh, just a quick update. I realized you know, it's been a couple weeks since my last show, and um, I realized that I haven't filled you guys in on you know what's going on with me personally uh, in the last few episodes. So uh, a couple things. One, I'm moving, so that's super exciting. Uh, we've been, Gab and I have been looking for a place for about the last year. Um, obviously, since CJ has been born, you know, we're in a, a two bedroom, uh, two bath apartment and it is super crammed. So we've been looking um, really ever since CJ was born and we've been unlucky, unlucky um, for, uh, for this whole time, you know, looking at different places. And we finally found a spot. Um, over here in Red Bank, New Jersey. So if you guys are uh, ever over this way, make sure you give me a shout. And um, we're going to be moving down here in June, so next month. So that's the first thing. So it's a little, been a little bit chaotic there. Uh, CJ is going to be one this month, so we got his first birthday party coming up. So we've been planning for that. That's exciting. Um, what else? Gab is about five months pregnant, 19 weeks, I think, or 20 weeks. So... Baby number two will be here in September, um, so just doctor's visits, checkups, that type of shit, um, and just been training the team on the business side. You know, we have you know a, a new sales manager. Um, we just promoted a facility leader, so just a lot of moving parts there. So it's been really hectic. That's why you haven't heard uh, an episode in the last couple of weeks, but. I did not forget about you guys. I am here, just been a little bit crazy. And by the way, for those of you listening that are in Jersey, I went to um, went to a restaurant. It's actually my my third time there, but every time I go, it's it's gotten better. It's one of those. Um, it's called Toka Vez over in Basking Ridge, New Jersey. If you guys, it's it's a Mexican steakhouse, so it's like an upscale um, Mexican steakhouse. Fantastic food. Um, if you're looking for like a date spot or something like that, definitely a, a good place to go. Good drinks, good vibe. Um, so definitely check them out. Had the best tequila I've ever had. And I haven't had a drink in honestly months at this point. It's been quite a while. Um, but I did have, uh, I'm going to fuck up the name of it. You guys probably, if you're a tequila head, you probably have heard of it. If you're a big drinker, you probably know it. Uh, Clasa Azul. Is that how you say it? I might be fucking that up. I think it's that bottle right over there, Christian. Is, is, is that? It looks like the same exact bottle. I'm pretty sure that's it. No, no, the white and blue one to the left. That one. This? The, to the left. To the left. The, right in front of you. <laughs> I, I'm blind. Dude, the big white bottle with the blue paint. There's it's like, yeah. Boss, bro. It, no, that they, they, I think that's the bottle, bro. Is it really? Yeah. See? He thought it was a vase, just a very dec very decorative tequila bottle. <laughs> and uh, by the way, best fucking tequila I've ever had. Just had it on the rocks. I'm lying. I had it with a little bit of club and lime, and it was fantastic. So if you guys are into tequila, um, being that I haven't had a drink in months, I, I was actually really fucking buzzed off of one glass. Um, such a lightweight these days. But, uh, but anyway, give that a shot. But I'm not gonna, here to talk to you guys today about tequila. I'm here to talk to you about why you are not seeing results in the gym. So if you are somebody who is stuck, if you are struggling to get past a plateau or you know maybe you just haven't really made any progress at all, um, then it comes down to these five reasons that I'm gonna share with you. No matter your level, we could look at these different categories and we could figure out what we need to do better in order to get over the hump and break through your plateau, right? So no matter where you are, if you're advanced, if you're a raw beginner, if you aren't seeing the progress that you want, if you look in the mirror and you're not looking the way you want, if you're not performing the way that you want, then we have to look um, at one of these areas, maybe a combination of these areas, all right? So the first thing, if you're not seeing results, the first, well, I'm not going to say the first thing because these could be out of order. All right. But so forget about the order. Let's just look at each of these categories. All right. So category number one 
if you're not seeing results, your diet probably sucks. Nutrition plays such a big role in your progress, okay? More so than people think. People think that if I do this workout or if I do that workout or do this or do that, then I'm going to see uh, all these changes because they burn more calories or this one is more geared towards hypertrophy and all that stuff. And that may be true. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But at the end of the day, you've heard the old fucking adage, you can't out train a bad diet. That is very true. Okay. As cliche as it is, that's been around forever because it is true. Okay, so if you're trying to build muscle and strength and you're past the newbie stages and the newbie gains that you're going to get, if you are not eating in a slight calorie surplus, if you're not getting enough protein, enough fat, enough carbohydrate in your diet and the right types of foods, not just bullshit, you know, um, what are the kids doing these days? They're uh, whacking down fucking Rice Krispie treats and shit like that after work. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about keeping your food clean, eating well, eating healthy, always prioritizing health first. But if you're not eating in a slight calorie surplus, then it's going to be very hard to build muscle and strength once you get past those newbie gains. Now, on the flip side, if you're not losing body fat, then you are probably not you're probably eating too many calories. You're you're probably in a calorie surplus or you're eating like a maintenance level of calories. So, we have to look at that. Then we could go down into the specific macro profiles. So are we eating enough protein? We need to be getting somewhere around one gram of protein per pound of your goal body weight per day. Are we getting enough fat in your diet? Sometimes, it, so this could vary. Maybe it's around 0.3 times, times your, your body weight. And are we getting enough carbohydrate in your diet? So that could be anywhere, you know, it really just depends. It depends how much fat you're doing, but that could be around one gram per pound of your goal body weight as well. Um, but that could fluctuate. That could be, you know, you could be doing carb cycling. So it could be higher days, lower days, et cetera. But, you know, just somewhere in that ballpark, we need to look at what you're consuming and what your macros look like. Because even if you're eating, let's say to be in a deficit, a slight deficit, you need to eat 800 calories but the majority of your calories are coming from fats and carbohydrate, you're still not going to achieve those physique goals that you want because you're not eating enough protein. So the macros do need to be dialed in. That is important. So if you're not seeing results, your diet may suck. So we need to look into that. So that's the first category. Now, category number two, if you're not seeing results in the gym, your program probably sucks. So you can't just go into the gym and do mindless exercises um, more mindless workouts with exercises that are not a great fit for you or for your structure. Um, if you're just doing random shit and you just want to get tired and sweaty, that's great. Get your heart rate up, break a sweat, but are you going to really see real results? No. Um, it's very unlikely. So unless you're a genetic freak, you're one of those guys that, you know, you could do 30 push ups and all of a sudden your friggin' pecs look like Arnold's. That's a, that's a different ball game. That's not most of us. That's not most of you listening to the show. Uh, you're probably not a genetic freak if you're, you're listening to me talk uh, up here. So with that being said, you need to make sure that your program is dialed in. And now what does that mean, right? Because there's, there's so much out there that you might not even understand what the fuck I'm talking about. So there's, there's layers to this. So let's, let's talk about it. So the first thing that we need to make sure for your program is, are we checking off the boxes? Is it a balanced program? Um, are we training for power at, with exercises that are appropriate for you? Are we training for stability, uh, for joint mobility? Are we training for strength? Are we training for hypertrophy? Are we training for um, cardiovascular conditioning? Um, we need to check all of those boxes for a well-balanced training program, right? So those are like the first major boxes, but now let's, let's break that down a little bit further. All right, let's look at the proper movement patterns. Um, are we doing enough pushing? Are we doing enough pulling? Are we doing enough lunging, enough squatting, enough hinging? Are we doing loaded carries? Are we doing direct abdominal work? 
um, as far as your actual exercise, the movement patterns that were being trained. Now we could take those movement patterns and we could break them down even further. And we could say, what exercise is best for you in each of these patterns? Is there enough uh, what's our intensity look like? What does our volume look like? So sets and reps and intensity. And when I say intensity, there's there, you may be thinking of effort, right? So sometimes you may think of intensity as like, how hard am I trying, right? Am I getting zero rest and moving and moving and moving? That's more effort. When we're talking about training intensity, guys, what we're talking about is a, a percentage of a one rep max. So for example, if I'm using, if I could squat... Um, let's just say hundred pounds for easy math, right? If I could do a, a hundred pound squat, okay. 90% of that would be 90 pounds. And that is a high intensity, right? You're, you're, it's a very high intensity. It's very close. It's a high percentage of your one rep max. But if I'm doing, let's say 70 pounds, which would be 70% of a hundred, that is lower intensity. And now I can do more reps um, with that weight than I would with 90 pounds. So you may think like if I do a one, one, two or three reps with 90 pounds, if my max is a hundred, that's high intensity, but it, you know, you're going to get long recovery in between those sets. It may feel a little bit easier for you versus doing higher volume, more sets, more reps, um, with a lower percentage of your one rep max. And that would actually be lower intensity, but it might feel in your mind like higher intensity. So those things do matter and they need to be spread out um, appropriately. They need to be spread out and worked into your program correctly. And if you're just doing this shit on your own, you have no idea what you're doing. So that's why it's so important to work with a qualified coach who could lay this stuff out for you and you know make it all make sense to make sure you're getting enough. Because recovery is a big part of the program, the, the process too. So if you're just doing mindless shit and sets and reps and, uh, you know, a uh, hundreds of sets and reps rather, and a, a ton of intensity work and man, you're going to be toast. So you got to make sure that, you know, this is set up properly for you. And also, you know, like we talked about the, your, your injury history, your stress levels, like all of those things need to be taken into account when you're designing a, a program. All right. And then the cycles, you know, how long are, cause you know, you might go into a CrossFit class and every day they're doing a different wad or workout of the day. Um, you know, the, the problem with that is you don't really give the body enough time to adapt to the new stress. So there's really no adaptation that occurs. If you're just, you know, what people will say is like, Oh, we got to keep the body guessing like, no, no, you don't. You should really, I mean, yes, that is true at some, to some degree, but you know, you, you really want to stick with a program for three or four weeks. Um, so you could actually get good at those movements, get stronger, um, maybe even build a little, a little bit of muscle before cycling in a new program. And by the way, the next program should build off of the last one. So let's just say every month you're doing a new training phase, that training phase should build off of the last month. Okay. So just things to consider guys. If you're doing random mindless shit, you're probably not going to see real results. So if you're struggling, you got to look at your program. Okay. So category number three, your technique sucks. Okay. Because let's just say you're performing these exercises incorrectly, right? So let's say you're doing, I don't know, um, a, a squat. We'll use that as an example again. And when you squat, you are not going through a full range of motion. You're not maintaining a neutral spine. Um, and let's just say you even have tight shoulders. So maybe the barbell squat isn't the best exercise for you, but you're just, you know, you're doing it anyway because you think you have to. Well, first thing, as far as the shoulders go, when you're reaching back and you're grabbing that bar, well, now you're putting a shit ton of stress on the shoulders. Is it worth it? Okay, you're rounding your back because you can't maintain that neutral spine. Well, now you're putting a lot of stress on the spine. You're not training through a full range of motion. So now we're not actually targeting the musculature that we're trying to train, right? That we're trying to target. So that's a, all a problem, right? What we're doing now is the muscle's not going to grow the way it should. You're not going to get as strong as you should. So you're leaving a lot of that on the table and you're putting a ton of stress on the joints. So there's a lot of red X's there. 
So you got to look at your technique first and foremost, guys. If, you, if you're just trying to move weight, if you're trying to just, you know, oh, I want to get stronger, so I, I got to, you know, add another five pounds to the bar. Well, if you just keep doing that and you're not paying attention to your technique, you're going to get injured, you're going to get beat up, you're going to feel like shit, you're not going to see real results. Those, that all sucks. Like, what do we, what the fuck are we training for, right? So we got to focus on technique. What I always like to say is treat your strength work like you would treat a sport. If you're learning a new sport, you're going to pay attention to technique, right? If you're going to learn a jujitsu, you're going to learn how to properly uh, secure an arm bar. You're going to learn the basic positions. So you're going to learn how you're going to learn how to play guard. You're going to learn side control. You're going to learn how to mount. Um, you're going to learn how to defend yourself from those positions. So that's all technique. It's not just brute strength. Now, people who have really great technique are really good at jujitsu. Okay. Now on the strength training side, it's the same deal. You need to think of it as a skill, as if you want to improve all of those movements. So you want to master those movements so you could actually target the muscle that we are trying to target. Okay. So if you are not seeing results that you want in the gym, your technique probably sucks. All right. Now, next category here, your sleep sucks. Okay. Because you are breaking muscle down when you're training, right? That's where we're creating damage. But we know that when you grow, when you get like the actual gains that you're going to make is going to happen when you are recovering from the work that you just put in. So quality sleep seven to nine hours per night. That is when we are going to replenish. There's a process called autophagy that happens where you're kind of um, washing out the, the damaged cells, so to speak, and replenishing. Um, this is when a lot of processes, like even the secretion of testosterone and human growth hormone occur. Um, your, your sleep is such a big factor in your progress, whether it be losing fat, because listen, if you're not sleeping well, your cortisol levels are going to be higher. You're going to be, you're going to feel like shit. That's going to carry over into the gym. The effort that you're capable of putting in is going to be much lower if you're exhausted. Your focus is going to be off. Even your discipline and your ability to stick to your diet is going to be off because you're hungry, right? So I'm sorry, because you're hungry, because you're tired, right? Hungry, tired, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. You know, those are when we, uh, we have those, those trigger emotions. But, but anyway, if you're not sleeping... All this is going to be thrown off. All of your hormones are going to be off. Uh, testosterone is going to be low. You're going to feel like shit. So sleep needs to be made a top priority. Seven to nine hours, quality sleep per night. You know the drill, guys. Have an evening routine. Make sure your room is cold and dark. Turn off electronics before bed. No light whatsoever in your room. No nightlight, no TV, no street lights coming in. Get blackout curtains. Make it cold make it dark. If you have crazy thoughts popping up at three o'clock in the morning, and that is what keeps you awake or wakes you up, do a brain dump before bed where you're just writing everything that's in your brain down on a sheet of paper, then you could prioritize it. So you know, that's like your, your to do list, your, your action list, your get shit done list, whatever you want to call it. If you're somebody that drinks a lot of caffeine, we got to look at how much you're consuming, we got to cut that back. Um, definitely cut it off you know, before bed, remember caffeine has a half-life. So um, I believe that the half-life of caffeine is uh, roughly five hours. So let's say you have 100 milligrams of caffeine at six o'clock, right? Like a normal cup of coffee. Well, then 50 milligrams of caffeine are still going to be rolling through your system at 11 p.m. So if you're trying to sleep at 10, well, you got 50 milligrams of caffeine rolling through your system it's going to be pretty damn hard to sleep. So you got to cut that caffeine off by four o'clock, three o'clock, like it may be even earlier. It's up to you on how early you want to go based on your work, or whatever you feel like you need caffeine for. Maybe you cut it out completely. But if you're drinking too much caffeine throughout the day, of course, that's going to affect your sleep. So just consider that. All right. So uh, finally, guys, if you are not seeing results, man, your training intensity may suck. 
All right. So when I talk about training intensity earlier, um, we talked about percentage of the one rep max, right? And here I'm going to like, that's, that's a part of this. However, I want you to think more so in terms of effort here. Okay. So, um, let's just say you have a set of eight reps. Okay. We're doing three sets of eight and for your working sets, your three sets of eight, you could, if, if I put a gun to your head, you could do eight reps with the 80 pound dumbbells. But if you, it says three sets of eight and you say, all right, cool. I'm going to grab the fifties or the sixties or the 65s or the seventies or the 75s. Well, now that set is too easy. There's not enough effort. There's not enough intensity. You're not working hard enough to yield an adaptation. Remember, the body, will, the body always wants to have this state of homeostasis. It doesn't want to change. So if you are not putting enough stress, appropriate stress, on the body through training, then there will be no adaptation. So if you're not training heavy enough, then the body has no reason to adapt. So if you're not seeing any growth or any progress, then it's like, how hard are you working? So that doesn't mean technique should be thrown out the window. Of course not. Remember what I said earlier. However, with proper, with, with near perfect technique, with near perfect technique, you want to use a weight that you can get for that set of eight. So it shouldn't be too heavy where you're only getting five or six reps. You want to get eight. But if they're, if the speed of the rep, if the speed of rep seven and eight is the same speed as rep one and two, then we know that's not heavy enough, right? You haven't chosen an appropriate weight. So you need to make sure that you're challenging yourself when you're in the gym. So yeah, you don't need to spend all day in the gym, seven days a week, three days per week for an hour each session is perfect. However, during that hour, that's 60 minutes where you got to fucking work. You got to go to war with yourself for those 60 minutes and push the envelope and push the fucking pace. Because if not, guess what? You're going to be right where you are a year from today. Okay. So with that said, let's do a quick little review here. So if you're not seeing any progress in the gym, you got to look at these different, these five different categories in no particular order. And it may be a combination of all of them, maybe a combination of a few, or maybe it's just one. But if you're stuck, we got to look at this. So category one, your diet sucks. Category two, your program sucks. Three, your training, your technique sucks. Four, your sleep sucks. Five, your training intensity sucks. So take a look at these categories, see what needs to improve, and then fucking change it. If you need help, you hire a coach. Um, if you're listening to this and you're local and you want to join our six-week ultimate shred challenge, uh, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at Chris underscore Tutela, T-U-T-E-L-A. We're going to help you with your training, your nutrition, and we'll even hold you accountable throughout the six-week program. We also do have a 90-day mentorship program at TTS. So this is a higher-level program where we really dive into nutrition coaching and macros. Of course, you'll be training with us three days per week, but you'll have a personal uh, nutrition coach that is working with you every step of the way. So every week, uh, you, 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 what, what will happen first? I fucking don't know what happened to me there. I think I had a little bit of a stroke, but... <laughs> What will happen first is you'll come in and you'll meet with your coach. You guys will go over your goals. You'll go over, you know, all the details, what you're struggling with. And then your coach will help you build out a meal plan that's specific to you, your lifestyle with a specific amount of calories, macros, et cetera. And then each week you guys will have calls to see how things are going. What do we need to tweak? What do we need to adjust? Um, you know, every step of the way. You could also do this program online if you would like to. So again, um, we could fill you in. Basically, uh, the nutrition coaching would remain exactly the same. The only difference would be you'd be doing, um, we'd be writing your training program for you online and you would just be letting us know, you know how it's going. You'd be giving us feedback. You'd be sending us videos and we're there to critique and coach you guys. So um, if you're interested in either of these programs, 
Um, we guys, listen, this is not like some scarcity tactic that we use. There really is. We, there's only a certain amount of people that we can take. <laughs> so spots are extremely limited for either of these programs. So if you are interested, uh, reach out right away. The next program is starting on May 20th, uh, both of these. So if you're interested, again, just DM me on Instagram at Chris underscore T-U-T-E-L-A, and I'll fill you in on all the details. Um, I love and appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to me uh, every week or every couple weeks um, since I fell off the last few with all the shit that I got going on. But I am back, baby, and um, looking forward to uh, helping you guys out every step of the way. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't left a review yet, please take a second to do that. Uh, an I, I, a five star iTunes review goes a long way. Really appreciate it. And um, if you have an extra second to leave a written review, that would mean even more. So thank you guys. I love you. And I'll catch you next week on another episode of the Iron Life Podcast. Peace.